probably his tie. Anyway, uh, I'm going to spend some time talking to you about Narit. Uh, Narit, or the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, has come a long way over the past decade. And we have known Mike Board for approximately 20 years, I guess. Yes. I think we first met uh, Mike and people from LJMU back in 2001 or 2002, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, here at Narit, we see astronomy as a challenge that drives human capacity building and technology development. Uh, of course, I got this from the IAU. As Astronomy plays a very significant role uh, in the various fields of uh, knowledge, including science, technology, and uh, culture. And I got this uh, from uh, the Office of Astronomy for Development of the IAU, uh, how astronomy related to the SDGs of UN. Anyway, uh, a little bit about NARIT. A lot of people might wonder why Thailand, which is a, a middle-income country, very similar to Botswana, why we're we doing astronomy here. Well, back in 2002, the Council of Science Deans uh, among the 24 universities in Thailand proposed the setup of NARIT and the Thai National Observatory on the highest mountain in Thailand. Uh, we proposed the project uh, and it got uh, through uh, cabinet approval in July 2004 uh, with the first uh, batch of the budget comprising around 312 million baht. Uh, the exchange rate uh, of the Thai baht is around 30 baht to one US dollar and it's been pretty stable over the years. Uh, yes, and in January 2009, uh, NARIT was established as a public organization, becoming a full organization. In the initial phase after 2004, we were a project under the Office of the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, the contract with uh, the telescope supplier, the first uh, uh, telescope here, I mean, research grade telescope started in 2006. In 2010, 2011, we started to construct the ring wall and uh, install uh, the enclosure of the observatory, which is the first flagship project uh, on the highest mountain in Thailand. And in February, 2012, nine years ago, uh, our 2.4 meter telescope saw the first light. And the following year, uh, the inauguration was presided over by uh, our princess. And only uh, last year, uh, our headquarters was constructed, was finished and uh, inaugurated. Actually, the inauguration took place on the 27th of, of January, 2020, Mike Board also attended the ceremony and we started uh, operation, I mean, full, full operation of the uh, Princess Sinton Astro Park or the Astro Park for short uh, as our headquarters, as well as uh, uh, providing services to the public in February, 2020. Yeah, that's a brief history of NARIT. Uh, from the establishment of NARIT as a full organization on the 1st of January 2009 up to last year, uh, the budget has grown steadily from around 70 million baht or about two, 2 million US dollar up to uh, more than higher than 20 million US dollar last year. Uh, we have grown not only in terms of the budget but also uh, uh, the manpower and uh, buildings and other infrastructures as well. 
this is the organization chart of NARIT. We uh, have uh, research groups as well as uh, centers that operate uh, telescopes, radio telescope, optical telescopes, as well as a center that develops our own optics and photonics technology. Well, this is a brief look at uh, uh, how the budget has grown uh, the year 2021, this current year. Uh, the budget has grown to around 900 million baht. Uh, sorry to say that last year, uh, even though uh, we initially we got the budget around 700 million baht, but with the addition of uh, another uh, batch of budget for our uh, Thai Space Consortium, uh, the addition of 128 uh, more million baht. So the total of last year close to uh, 900 million baht or about 30 million US dollar. Uh, we have now uh, a to the total of, uh, of staff, uh, both permanent and, and temporary, 238. And actually, we've got uh, 16 foreign staff uh, coming from, uh, from more than 10 countries that include uh, two students from Botswana, uh, an engineer, optical engineer from France, uh, a physicist, astrophysicist from Russia, uh, another, uh, 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 I mean, Jap Japanese uh, radio astronomers, for example. And we've got people from the Philippines, India, Indonesia, engineer from the USA, and uh, public outreach uh, officer from Hong Kong, China, and New Zealand. So it's a uh, multinational uh, office. And yeah, we very used to uh, uh, foreign staff. We strive to become a world-renowned organization in astronomy, technology, and innovation. And we see astronomy as a platform to develop uh, deep technology uh, for our own use as well as uh, a platform to train people to get involved in deep tech and innovation. Our missions are uh, very similar to the other organizations. We do research, of course. Uh, in, uh, we, we have uh, four research groups right now. We do technology development, which I like to focus uh, within this talk as well. And we do extensive public outreach and engagement. And actually, a lot of people in Thailand uh, look at NARIT as an organization that organizes uh, activities, stargazing activities, uh, schools and workshops, and uh, lots of other things like uh, performing, organizing astronomy camps, for example, teachers training. And well, I'll show you the figures about our outreach. Uh, we, we provide a lot of service to, to the public, public of Thailand. And uh, the last mission that we uh, really proud of, we, uh, we work together with friends uh, outside of Thailand as well as uh, with organizations within the country. Regarding infrastructure of NARIT, we have telescopes in Thailand, of course. Uh, we actually, uh, we, we, we do, I mean, do, domestically, we have uh, the Thai National Telescope, the first flagship project that I mentioned to you earlier uh, here in Chiang Mai, where I'm sitting now. Um, the city of Chiang Mai is around uh, 600 kilometers away to the north of Bangkok. Uh, pretty close to the border with Myanmar and Laos uh, at a latitude of 18 degrees something and uh, 100 degrees east. Here we have uh, our headquarters as well as the Thai National Telescope. And uh, the second infrastructure, I mean, I mean flagship project that uh, going to finish soon is a radio telescope. I'll show you a little later. Apart from the research facilities, we also establish uh, a number of uh, observatories for the public 
it's called regional observatories for the public. Uh, so far, three observatories uh, at different locations in Thailand already completed and provide service to the public. And, and one, another one is under construction. Outside of Thailand, we install small telescopes at four locations. The first one that we did uh, back in 2013 uh, is in Chile. Over there, we, we have a, a small telescope that is operated through the internet in Chile at, at, at Salotololo Inter-American Observatory. I'll show you some pictures right on. And the second telescope that we installed outside of Thailand is in China at Cao Meiku Observatory. And the third one in the US in the Sierra Nevada Mountain, California. And the fourth one in Australia. This is the picture of our Thai National Observatory on the highest mountain in Thailand. Uh, this picture was taken uh, soon after the installation of the telescope many years ago. Uh, the, uh, the, the surrounding has changed slightly. Over there, we, uh, on the telescope, on the 2.4 meter telescope, we got now a range of instruments that includes uh, medium resolution spectrograph, a 4K by 4K uh, CCD camera, and uh, ultra spec or the fast readout camera. Uh, this ultra spec doesn't belong directly to NARIT. It, it, it's part of collaboration between NARIT and the universities of uh, Sheffield and Warwick in the UK. Those three main instruments uh, were not developed uh, by our own uh, engineers. Uh, the MRES was actually a result of collaboration between NARIT and an institute in China. Uh, the 4K by 4K CCD camera, uh, we procured this instrument from San Diego, USA. And of course, the outer spec belongs to University of Sheffield and Warwick. But since then, we've been trying to develop uh, instruments by ourselves. Uh, and this year, we added a low resolution spectrograph to the telescope. Another uh, fine uh, spect spectroscopic uh, instrument, the ExoSpec high resolution spectrograph, is being developed, co developed by NARIT and University of Hertfordshire in the UK. It's getting close to uh, completion now. It saw first light uh, a year ago. And next year, we're going to add another capability, which is a, a, a coronagraph. Uh, this is a very uh, unique coronagraph in the sense that we use uh, what we call uh, the technique of evanescent wave. And, it's being developed by our own team. The conceptual design of this instrument, the Evaco, was done by uh, Professor uh, uh, in, in France, Yves Rabia in France. And soon we'll add a prime focus camera to the, uh, to the telescope, uh, maybe in two or three years' time. And after installation in 2012, when it saw the first light, we've been upgrading the telescope as well. We found out about stray lights and a certain uh, aberration resulting from uh, the edge, uh, uh, the imperfection of the edge of the mirror, of the 2.4 mirror, which uh, also conforms to the specification, of course, but we had to mask it in order to get rid of stray light and, and spikes, uh, a diffraction, diffraction, an unwanted diffraction uh, spikes uh, of the image. Uh, we, uh, in 2019, we also uh, designed and fabricated our own focal reducer for the 4K by 4K CCD camera, which can now cover the whole unminated beam from the telescope, which is uh, 14 arc minutes. 
we're going to upgrade the secondary mirror support uh, from three axis actuator to uh, hex support, which is a very new concept. We've already got the hex support uh, from Germany, but we're designing the support and mechanical part for this. And hopefully later this year, we can try this hex support on the telescope. We also developing our own a telescope control system to replace the whole software and electronics that came with the telescope. By the way, I might have mentioned that we signed contract with this company back in 2006. The software that controls the telescope still based on Windows XP. Uh, so we, uh, a few years ago, we anticipated that if we didn't do anything with this, we would face serious problems regarding control system. So we did decided to develop this and partly with LJMU, uh, yes, uh, under, uh, and, and partly funded for, for, for the new telescope system, partly funded uh, on the LJMU side by uh, the Newton Fund uh, of the UK. We are also developing right now a new uh, Nasmith focal station so that in the future the telescope can accommodate several instruments at the same time. A little bit about the site of the Thai National Observatory. If you look uh, on the upper image, uh, that's the Doi Thanon Mountain, which is which, uh, at, at the summit there is uh, 2,565 meters above the sea level. Our observatory is located at 2,450 meters. Uh, and the sky there is very transparent, even though if you look at the, uh, the upper picture, uh, the atmosphere here is full of aerosols, but uh, the mixing uh, boundary of the aerosol keeps the layer of the aerosol down below 2000 meters mark uh, most of the time. And on the mountain at the summit of Doi Thanon is the coldest spot in the country. Temperatures can go down to minus five in the winter to 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, in the summer. That's pretty cool uh, compared to the city of Chiang Mai where I'm sitting right now. This afternoon we had a temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. Two years ago we added another telescope uh, to cope with the demand of the uh, 2.4 meter. By the way, because we located close to the equator, the observing window uh, last uh, from uh, late October to early May, and altogether we can accommodate uh, the demand of astronomers altogether about 200 nights a year. And the subscription rate of the 2.4 meter telescope so far is around somewhere between 350 to 400 nights a year. And a few years ago, we decided to procure another one meter telescope and install it there to support uh, work that uh, works that don't need uh, the 2.4 meter. Anyway, it's been uh, quite a success uh, operating uh, both telescopes uh, at TNO so far. The, <clears throat> the next upcoming flagship project for uh, astronomy in Thailand is the construction of this uh, radio telescope uh, outside of the city uh, in the valley surrounded by mountain. This is the latest picture. We did the big lift of the dish, uh, 40 meter dish onto the tower uh, back in February, 2020. But since then we haven't been able to finish the final part due to uh, the spread of the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, so uh, engineers from Germany, the, the, the design, uh, the, 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 the company that supplies this telescope uh, is based in Germany, MT Mechatronics, the same company that uh, built uh, Fsberg 100 meter, as well as uh, uh, so many uh, uh, large radio telescopes worldwide. Well, this telescope is almost the same uh, almost identical to uh, the year best, uh, the 40 meter year best telescope outside of Madrid. If you look at the size of the car here, it's pretty small compared to the telescope. 
it's got a very uh, good uh, surface accuracy. This is inside the dish. Uh, the surface, the, 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 the accuracy of the uh, surface of the dish allows uh, us to work up to uh, 100 gigahertz from UHF to 100 gigahertz. Well, uh, this is another upcoming project uh, uh, of NARIT in the south of Thailand. Soon we're going to install a, thir a 13 meter VGOS uh, telescope uh, for geodesy. This is because Thailand located on two tectonic plates, the upper part located on the Eurasian plate, but uh, Bangkok and the peninsula located on a smaller plate called Sunda. And these two plates uh, move east-west of each other pretty slowly. So the, the technique of uh, radio astronomy is the most accurate one for identification of the rate of movement of the, two, the plates. And we, so we, we're going to install a few telescopes over uh, across Thailand to, to perform this uh, for, for geodesy, uh, yes. This is the pictures of the small telescopes we installed outside of Thailand. Uh, the left one is the 0.6 meter, uh, which has been used extensively because the site the, 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 at CTIO is, uh, is superb. It provides more than 300 clear nights a year. And we're going to add a second telescope there. This is a collaboration between NARIT and University of North Carolina at, at Chapel Hill, UNC Chapel Hill in the US. Uh, soon we will have two telescopes in Chile. And in China at Gao Mei Gu, next to uh, the largest optical telescope in China uh, is our 0.7 meter telescope. This is the highest altitude uh, that we've got at, at 3,200 meters above the sea level. And the third one in the US, uh, located at a private uh, facility that provides services to uh, both amateur and professional astronomers. A few years ago, we installed this 0.7 meter. There is actually a good site and, and not far from Fresno, only 30 miles east of Fresno, very easy to get there. And a few years ago, we also installed another telescope uh, in Australia next to Siding Spring, just outside of Siding Spring in a private facility as well. And Actually, over there, we install a small, a smaller telescope for public outreach uh, for astrophotographers in Thailand to get access to uh, the southern hemisphere uh, from Australia. Yeah, this is an aerial uh, photograph of our uh, Astro Park, the headquarters of NARIT. Nowadays, I work in this building, the headquarters, the office. Over there, apart from uh, office, offices for astronomers and uh, engineers, we, we have a, a medium-sized planetarium and astronomy exhibition uh, under this uh, roof, uh, which, is, which has become very popular over the past year, even though we, faced, uh, we had to shut, down, shut it down for three months due to the spread of COVID. Uh, at the headquarters, we also uh, have a 0.7 meter telescope under this enclosure uh, and we provide service to the public uh, every week. We organize stargazing or public nights on Saturdays, but on weekdays, uh, often we uh, organize stargazing activities to schools on weekdays and weekends to the public. Uh, at the headquarters, apart from office, planetarium and observatory, we also have laboratories. Yes. Including mechanical workshop, optics lab, uh, microwave lab, and uh, thin film 
or memory coding facility. These are the pictures of the planetarium and uh, activities inside. Uh, that building uh, is becoming very popular uh, among the among schools and the public uh, in Chiang Mai. People excited about uh, our facility and many people come every day. This is the sort of uh, activities we organize. Outside of uh, Chiang Mai, uh, across the country, as I mentioned, we in the process of setting up five uh, regional observatories. So far, uh, three have been uh, completed. And I think Mike has been to all of them, including Nakhon Ratchasima, Chacheng Sao, just outside of Bangkok, and Song Kla, uh, the southern at only seven degrees north of the equator. This is the picture of the observatory in the Conrad Sima. The first one is be established uh, as a regional observatory inside the uh, Suranari University of Technology campus. And this is the one just outside of Bangkok in the uh, province of Chacheng Sao, uh, which has got uh, almost everything. We, we have this uh, small planetarium, a 50 seat planetarium uh, we have uh, some area for exhibition. We have a small uh, observatory here with a 0.7 meter telescope as well as uh, a number of smaller telescopes under the row of roof. We also constructed a replica of the Stonehenge there. And we can also organize outdoor stargazing. Uh, uh, for example, when uh, Gemini uh, meteor shower uh, came last year, uh, a thousand people attended this event at Chacheng Sao Observatory. This is another one, uh, the latest one in the south of Thailand of uh, Song Kla, with similar uh, uh, facilities uh, include, that includes a planetarium, uh, telescopes, and meeting room, and uh, area for exhibition. Uh, this is the, the, the newest one under construction in the province of Konkan in the Northeast again. So from the experience we gained uh, from building the first three regional observatories, we trying to make this one in Konkan slightly larger due to the popularity of the three previous places. Regarding research, uh, these are the research groups under the read now. These are the names of the projects. I'll go through this quickly. Yeah. Sorry. Apart from, apart from doing astrophysics and cosmology, we also uh, have a, a research group that uh, related to uh, atmospheric science as well as space weather. This is the astrophysics, understanding physics of the universe, of course exoplanets and astrobiology. It's worth mentioning that so far, our staff have discovered 11 exoplanets. Uh, this is cosmology, because many projects and other projects, including uh, history and heritage. Look at the statistics of our uh, research groups. We now have uh, 19 full-time uh, researchers. And no, this this actually the figure of last year, this year probably has gone up slightly. Last year we had 19 PhDs as a full-time staff, uh, nine postdoctoral fellows, and 22 research assistants in the research group. Uh, we also supervise students uh, from various universities across the country. Uh, that includes uh, 17 PhDs and 24 master degree. We provide uh, supervision or advice to a uh, bachelor student doing projects in astronomy as well. The average number of uh, refereed paper uh, 
to research uh, uh, last year was two, po uh, two papers per, per head or per researcher and the impact factor average around uh, four something. Uh, our res researchers, most of them are uh, pretty young and you probably recognize some faces. This chap, these two chaps uh, from Botswana, because uh, some senior people include uh, David Murkishian from Ukraine, uh, who is above 60 now. Uh, last year we had this uh, uh, fellow from University of Manchester visiting for one year. He will come back again. Apart from those, uh, the average age of our researchers around 33 or 34. Uh, pretty young. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention to you that before, before the establishment of NARIT, the number of individual members of the IAU from Thailand was around 15 or 16 people, or 15 or 16 members. But right now, uh, 12 years after establishment uh, as a full organization, the number of individual members of the IAU has gone up to more than 50. Uh, technology development, we focus right now on five areas. The first one is optics and photonics. It is easy to understand why we have to do this because all uh, astronomical equipment, uh, optical optics and photonics, uh, uh, I mean, make use of optics and photonics technology. Of course, because we starting to do radio astronomy seriously and we hoping to join uh, VRBI networks across uh, 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 continents, uh, both Asia and Australia, and maybe Europe as well, we have to establish a couple of years ago a lab uh, uh, doing microwave technology. We have a very nice group doing mechatronics, of course, because most modern uh, telescopes are like robots. They need control system. And because we do <clears throat> optics and photonics and other related technology, we uh, developed uh, this capability uh, to machine parts precisely. Nowadays, uh, we can perform or fabricate uh, mechanical parts to the precision of 10 microns or so very easily. <clears throat> and a few years ago, we also established uh, this facility for, to provide high performance com computing uh, facility to uh, both uh, the staff of NARIT as well as uh, people outside of the institute if they're keen to get access to. And two years ago, uh, this SPC facility in Narit was the fastest in Thailand. Uh, and the computing power still stands at around 120 uh, gigaflops now. Uh, but uh, the past year or so, we try to add more and more storage capability because in astronomy, we have to uh, accommodate or uh, archive a lot of data uh, especially uh, for the radio uh, telescope. And after uh, we start the operation, the need for more storage will increase maybe tenfold. In the optics and photonics uh, center, these are the names of the projects uh, we're carrying out this year, including telescope design, spectroscopy, and chronography and adaptive optics. Sorry. Yes, uh, regarding uh, laboratories for optics and photonics, we will split into two parts. Uh, in Chiang Mai at the Astro Park, we will focus on astronomy and space applications. But at the regional observatory, Songkla in the south, with the collaboration between Narit and uh, Prince of Songkhla University in the south, which has got a very a good, a very talented uh, group of people in optics and photonics. We're going to establish another lab there. Uh, and 
This one intended uh, for industrial applications. In radio frequency technology, apart from installation of the 40 meter telescope, uh, three years ago, so we started to develop uh, our own receivers by collaborating with institutes outside of Thailand. This is a good example uh, uh, of collaboration between us and IGN in Spain, which is the KU band holographic receiver that is needed uh, to uh, measure the surface accuracy of the telescope, of the 40 meter telescope. The L band receivers and the L band and the K band receivers uh, were the first uh, to be planned. I mean, the, I mean the construction. And initially when we were not ready uh, to and started to seek uh, collaboration. This, this, these two receivers actually the work between our engineers and uh, uh, our friends in Germany at the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy. Uh, they now finished and uh, sent to Narit in Chiang Mai, waiting for installation on the telescope. Apart from those three receivers, uh, this year, we in the process of designing uh, more receivers uh, and they will be built in Chiang Mai, in, in, in Thailand. And there was, the first one will be a C-band receiver. Uh, we got uh, collaboration and advice from National Astronomical Observatory of Japan and the K plus Q, the blue band receiver. This is a collaboration between Narit and Kasi in Korea. Regarding mechatronics, apart from control system that I mentioned to you uh, for the, uh, the new control system for the 2.4 meter telescope, a couple of years ago, we developed a uh, satellite tracking capability uh, within the Institute. Uh, the regular user nowadays, uh, are people from the Royal Thai Air Force who come to use uh, our facilities to track satellites every week. And this is the mock-up uh, of the new uh, mock-up telescope that we try uh, to, uh, I mean, we, we try to test uh, the new control system and electronics. Uh, the electronics that came uh, with the 2.4 meter telescope uh, contained in a big rack, uh, but after uh, this new development, uh, the electronics with the new technology become a pretty small uh, within the base of this 14 inch telescope that we tested. Uh, the, this is pretty strange, but I like to tell you that apart from uh, rela uh, astronomy related uh, technology or instruments, we also been helping uh, uh, this institute uh, to decide and, and, and fabricate a prosthetic uh, hip joint, for example. Uh, when the engineers uh, are skillful, I think they can do anything. Apart from the hip joint, and last year we developed this artificial arm for uh, this uh, young girl who has got uh, no arms at all. Uh, successfully, she is very happy. She comes from the south of Thailand. Uh, this is a good example that uh, she can now write with her a new artificial arm. We are actually developing second version, a much better one than this one, so that she can uh, use this artificial arm uh, to feed herself as well, to eat. Yeah, and and yes. During COVID uh, crisis back in March last year, we started to develop uh, our own ventilator. Uh, it took us only a few weeks to get through, uh, to, to get to understand uh, the, how, how ventilator works. We started similar to the other organization by providing some simple solutions, but uh, 
soon we realized that you know the doctors wouldn't uh, use uh, some basic equipment like that so we started to look at a more uh, sophisticated instruments and in July we uh, achieved uh, this prototype last July this is a uh, based on a very similar uh, technology used in the ICU wards. Uh, uh, we developed this successfully and it's got uh, a lot of attention. We going to test it on animals. We've got collaboration from local hospitals as well and some <clears throat> medical equipment suppliers in Bangkok also interested. They've come here many times and we agree to develop this further uh, to, to become a commercial product uh, as a result of uh, astronomy technology. We're pretty proud of. This is a short video of uh, the development of a ventilator last year. Sorry, the text in Thai. It took us, we started doing this uh, in March 2020 from some simple thing. Uh, the first version based on technology developed by MIT and Rice University. And then we realized that it wouldn't be so useful because the doctor wouldn't trust uh, uh, something that, that kind of basic. We started from something pretty simple indeed. And then developed it further into a very sophisticated machine. Actually, uh, the current version of the ventilator, the servo valve is controlled by an algorithm that we de developed for the 2.4 meter telescope uh, using Kalman filter. This is the current version. It gives readouts of uh, the pressure uh, from the patient as well as a, a flow rate and beat per minute. And the, uh, it can control parameters similar to uh, ventilators used in the hospital. Well, uh, next, the high precision machining laboratory. I mentioned to you that we can achieve routinely fabrication of parts uh, to the highest precision of around 10 micron right now. And from time to time, we uh, not only provide this to NARI staff, but also to outside of, of the Institute, including universities in the country, free of charge mainly. We establishing this uh, Astro Fab Lab to accommodate uh, collaboration with the Thai industry uh, the new, this part should be completed uh, in April this year. And we'll start to do uh, uh, training and, and collaboration, including devel uh, the development of, of uh, other technologies. This is the picture of our high performance computing facility at Narit. We call this cluster Chala 1 after the legend, the Thai legend. And Chala One actually uh, was uh, is the official name of the uh, the star forty seven Ursa Majoris. A few years ago, the Thai people voted uh, uh, IAU call for voting of uh, the uh, the star forty seven Ursa Majoris, Majoris which uh, has got uh, two exoplanets. Somehow. Uh, the name from Thailand uh, won the award. Maybe so many people voted that at uh, that time. And 47 uh, Ursa Majoris has become 
uh, Shalawan officially. So we decided to name our uh, HPC cluster Shalawan after the star. Yes, uh, apart from cosmology, astrophysics, and astronomy, we also provide uh, the computing power to other fields of science as well, including atmospheric science, uh, condensed matter, and uh, other uh, big data development. A little bit about, about the Thai Space Consortium. Four years ago, we joined with uh, other two uh, institutes uh, under the same ministry, forming this Thai Space Consortium. The plan, initial plan was to build a small uh, satellite by our engineers among the, from the three institutes. And uh, later, uh, six more universities joined the consortium as well as the National Innovation Agency who will be responsible for getting startups, startup uh, of, uh, companies, startup companies uh, for the space uh, industry. This is the plan of a Thai space consortium. Uh, we now working with a Chinese uh, institute in Changchun under the Chinese Academy of Sciences on this uh, first uh, TSC Pathfinder uh, satellite, which is a 80 kilogram, uh, a small one. And we hope this will be launched uh, towards the end of next year. And at the same time, uh, we're working on TSC-1 satellite, which will be 100 kilogram and planned uh, for launch in 2025. The hyperspectral imaging payload uh, is mainly the work of NARIT uh, by our optics group. This is intended for Earth observation. Thailand operates several satellites uh, under the Ministry of Science and Technology, of course. Uh, and this will be uh, the next batch of uh, satellites will be operating. And a few months ago, uh, we planned with the funding agency uh, to move one of the projects uh, forward uh, to 2027, which created a lot of attention nationwide. Uh, we hope that after the completion of TSC-1, around 80% of the components and parts and design can be used uh, for next serious uh, project, the lunar orbiter. With the addition of ion thruster, we hope in 2027, we can send this probe to the moon. It will be launched as a, a similar way to the geosynchronous orbit satellite, to the geosynchronous transfer orbit first. And after that, we'll use an ion thruster to the, uh, to the orbit uh, into a highly uh, uh, elliptical orbit and that, that will reach the moon in about 13, 14 months time after launch. Uh, that way we can get to the moon uh, pretty cheaply and the, the, the total budget of uh, TSC-1 is around 30 million US dollar. But for TSC-2 that will reach to the moon, the launch fee is uh, more expensive, much more expensive. And the addition of uh, ion thruster also makes it more uh, heavy uh, to around 300 kilograms. And the total cost uh, for the lunar orbiter is estimated at around 3 billion baht or around 100 million US dollar. This is the specifications of our TSC Pathfinder, which is a research collaboration between NARIT and uh, Shangchun uh, Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics and Physics in China. They're very, uh, very good. They're very talented and, and they have uh, launched many satellites so far. This is uh, a specification of the uh, TSC-1, which will be mainly pub, uh, fabricated at NARIT and tested at another organization in Thailand. Uh, we, uh, another institute, uh, the, the uh, Geoinformatics and Space Technology Institute uh, under the same ministry already established assembly integration and testing facility outside of Bangkok for, for space purposes, of course. 
And this is a rough specification of TSC2 that we reached the moon uh, maybe in 2028, uh, one year after launch. And this is the payload uh, for intended for the TSC1, the first satellite, as well as the uh, TSC2 that will share some uh, uh, common uh, payloads, uh, which is the hyperspectral imaging uh, camera designed by our own people. This will make use of a new technique in uh, the freeform optics, freeform optical parts. Public outreach, because we, these are the four uh, target groups, teachers, youth, students, general public, and amateur astronomers. And look at the figure uh, of last year, even though we had this uh, uh, crisis uh, of COVID-19, the people uh, joining activities at the various sites of Narit uh, altogether was higher than 300,000. Uh, initially, we expected to have number of vis visitors uh, up to around half a million, but luckily, uh, because of COVID, the, num the number wasn't that high, and we can still accommodate uh, this number pretty easily at uh, four locations. <clears throat> well, these are the pictures of uh, our activities uh, from teachers training workshop. We collaborate with the Ministry of Education on this. And astronomy has become part of the basic education in Thailand <clears throat> for 20 years now, from grade one to 12. This project is worth mentioning. <clears throat> A few years ago, uh, back in 2015, we started to hand out these Dobsonian telescopes to schools in Thailand. And the first batch uh, uh, comprising 60 telescopes. And since then, we've been uh, uh, adding a number of telescopes headed out to schools. And up to now, 460 have been given to schools nationwide to all 77 provinces. Uh, this Dobsonian telescope made here in Thailand, designed by my fellow amateur astronomer in Thailand. It's a simple one, but because of the large aperture of uh, uh, 25 centimeter, uh, it can be used for observation of all planets and thousands of uh, deep sky objects, including galaxies and nebulae. And schools can organize stargazing activities together with NARIT and we perform uh, this kind of collaboration through the social media uh, like Facebook and Twitter. Well, students are also always keen uh, on astronomy and it's not difficult why, uh, to understand why <coughs> uh, they love astronomy so much. Imagine if uh, a small kid uh, look at uh, planet Saturn through a small telescope. That's something they never forget, right? And we also organize a lot of talks uh, all year round. For example, uh, a year and a half ago, we organized this uh, uh, event uh, together with SETI. The, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence that drew a lot of attention among the public. We invited uh, Andrew Simeon, uh, the director of uh, SETI Breakthrough to give a talk, uh, as well as uh, uh, the director of Georgia Bank Observatory from the UK. Yes, this, uh, for the amateur astronomers, we organized uh, training workshops for them also on, on astrophotography and the number of amateur astronomers in Thailand gone up quite dr uh, dramatically right now. Uh, many of them very serious and can perform, as, uh, I mean, can uh, do astro uh, or create astro photos that uh, rival the, the best in the world. Uh, many of them have, uh, 
been successful in getting uh, their astro photos uh, published on uh, astronomy picture of the day organized by NASA many times. Uh, these are activities like a super full moon, uh, when the moon is full and closest. Uh, and that year uh, is uh, very popular now. Partial solar eclipses last year. The apparition of comet Neowise also drew a lot of attention. Uh, this is the PR report uh, from our public communications. Uh, there's all the social media channels of Narit have become pretty popular. We have uh, the number of followers on Facebook right now, about half a million. Uh, yes. And our website is access, accessed about a million times a year by the public. Yes, then this is the number of followers on Facebook. Uh, up to around half a now. You see the flag of Botswana on this page, uh, on this slide. This is the collaboration between Narit and, and institutes inside Thailand and, and, and outside of the country. That includes uh, US, China, UK, Australia, uh, and ASEAN countries, Southeast Asian countries, Germany, uh, Japan, of course, yes. And among institutes, uh, most most of them are, are, are the, 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 the main institutes uh, outside of Thailand, including uh, Max, Planck in, Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy, NAOJ in Japan, KASI in Korea, Institute Doptic in France, we now part of the Cherenkov Telescope Array project as well. Well, this is another uh, collaboration with UK universities, uh, actually started by recommendation by uh, Professor Michael Board, <laughs> uh, the STFC Narit Newton Fund collaboration that started uh, in 2017. Uh, these are the, uh, the current projects uh, being uh, done by our uh, people as well as uh, staff from this, uh, those seven universities in the UK. And those are the, nine, uh, the names of the nine projects uh, being funded uh, right now by STFC Narit Newton Fund. From the UK side, they spend uh, for this year, about 1.3 billion pounds. And on the Thai side, we match with around 66 million baht. Yes. The project ranges from public outreach to technology development, as well as research, of course, and training. This is another project we're proud, pretty proud of. We work with the uh, Electricity Generating Authority of Thailand trying to mitigate this problem of uh, light pollution in the national park by installing a proper reflector to a light bulbs used by farmers to grow flowers uh, to limit upward uh, uh, light and thus saving a lot of uh, money uh, for the electricity bills. Apart from astronomy, we also uh, do atmospheric science, atmospheric research. Uh, we last year established this Thailand Consortium for Atmospheric Research, comprising 28 institutes. And the aim is to do uh, uh, integrated research on uh, both uh, climate change and air quality, which is a big problem here, especially during dry season. We are now, as I mentioned, part of this uh, big international projects, uh, the Cherenkov Telescope Array that will establish or install uh, Cherenkov telescopes uh, at two locations in the Southern Hemisphere uh, near Cerro Palarnao in Chile and in the Northern Hemisphere in La, on La Palma, the Canaries Island uh, off the west coast of Africa. 
uh, we uh, get into this project by providing a mirror coating facility uh, to record more than 6,000 mirrors uh, of the Cherenkov telescopes. Uh, the mirror coder being developed uh, by uh, our engineers as well as uh, uh, from our colleagues uh, at the Synchrotron Light uh, Research Institute uh, in Thailand. And this is the picture. Uh, this picture shows the conveyor type uh, sputtering chamber uh, being uh, done, uh, being built by uh, fellows uh, at the Synchrotron Light Research Institute. And this is the mirror preparation part, uh, automated mirror preparation before going into the sputtering chamber, already finished by our engineers uh, here at the Astro Park. Last year, we sent uh, together with Chiang Mai University and Mahidon University this neutron monitor to Antarctica. Uh, on the latter, uh, this is part of the project called Latitude Survey on board the Chinese icebreaker going to Antarctica to measure cosmic ray at different latitudes uh, as a result of the uh, variation of the geomagnetic fields. Uh, Yes, and we operate this center called International Training Center in Ast Astronomy under the auspices of UNESCO as well. And last year, we just signed an extension to operate this South Asia Regional Office of Astronomy for Development, which is part of the IAU uh, covering South Asia. And these are the names of the projects undertaken by both ITCA and C Road uh, in 2020. Uh, even though we uh, got to do some of these activities online, still uh, last year, 493 participants from many countries joining uh, the activities. Well, that's all. Uh, I've got to thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to the talk, and I'm very glad to answer to all your questions. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, Saran. That was a fantastic talk. It covered a huge amount of ground, and uh, you're quite right when I think about it. It was 20 years ago that we first met, and who would have thought 20 years ago that now you'd be uh, planning on a, an orbit, a, a moon orbiting uh, satellite? Uh, and all the other things you're doing, not just in astronomy, uh, but also for the public good. Um, the small illustrations you had just emphasized all that and uh, it's fantastic. Um, we all have a lot to, to learn from the way that you've done this and the way you're proceeding. And uh, I, I know that um, both the UK and I'm sure Botswana are, are very grateful for the collaborations that they have with you and your, your colleagues. So, um, without further ado, uh, if anybody has any questions, if they either want to raise their hand or just speak up, and then we just have a few minutes. Um, Mike, um, th um, th this is um, Mike Jeffries. Can I just build on what you've said, Mike, um, and thank Saran tremendously. I am um, a real novice in the world of astronomy. I have a, a, an intellectual interest, sadly no experience, but as an exercise in understanding how a country can develop a set of um, resources, I am just in awe of what you, Saran, and Thailand has achieved in 12 years of work. I am completely overwhelmed. It is a most wonderful achievement for you personally, but also um, you, your organizations. And uh, my question, really, uh, you've partly answered. Um, in those incredible 12 years, um, my question generally is, what do you feel, are you pleased with the public response to this tremendous development? Yes, and um, you know, being a public organization, uh, we rely on support from the public a lot. 
we quite different from other research institutes uh, in the more developed nations. In the fact that we provide a lot of uh, service, uh, uh, our, our public engagement programs is real big. You, you, you may have seen that we even establish uh, regional observatories for the public, mainly for the public, not for research. And that way we gain support and not only from the public, but of course from uh, the politicians and, and the government uh, throughout the years. Uh, initially, when we started, uh, when, when the project got approved uh, back in 2004, uh, waiting for installation, uh, I mean, for, for, for the, the, the optical telescope, the 2.4 meter telescope to be completed, we started to do serious uh, public outreach uh, program uh, by first uh, organizing stargazing activities with small telescopes. And then we go out to schools to try and, and train the teachers and things like that. And gradually uh, that work become uh, the major part before the, the, the real est establishment back in 2009. Right? That's why we, we, we are known uh, by the public more on this public outreach than the other parts uh, of the work. And currently we're trying to transform the image of Narit. Uh, this is pretty serious. We, we, we just don't want to uh, get stuck with the, that, that kind of uh, a former image of uh, institute organizing stargazing events. And we're trying to transform uh, the perception of the public uh, by gradually uh, distributing a lot of information on the technology development as well as research done by our astronomers. Uh, if you look at our uh, uh, social media, uh, like Facebook, uh, which has got a lot of attention. And two years ago, we won the award uh, prize for being the most effective, effective of all uh, social media channels among the uh, government institutes. We won the first prize. And we, we, we have only four people doing this, but, but they're pretty good. We, we, uh, I think we're quite successful uh, by, by uh, using, I mean, using uh, social media channels like Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. We now get a lot of uh, followers. We have a, lot, a big number of followers uh, on those channels. And every day uh, we update information uh, we try to understand what kind of information the public uh, love uh, so much. So we, we, we're pretty serious on, on this kind of public engagement in order to get support. Otherwise, we wouldn't survive without the support because Thailand is still a developing country and emerging economy, of course. And we're trying to uh, convince them that uh, to get out of this middle income trap, we need to transform our uh, labor force to become uh, technology, I mean, uh, I mean, skillful in, in, in advanced technology. Apart from training our own people, of course, we train students as well as uh, whoever want to work with NARIT. We provide uh, support to, uh, we, 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 we launched an internship program a couple of years ago. And each year we train hundreds of students from universities. So when they, when they come here, not only astronomers, you know, uh, engineers, programmers, uh, technicians, uh, even uh, uh, peer, uh, students doing public relations come to NARIT and, be, uh, and, and, and train uh, uh, more seriously than just uh, uh, when they study at universities. And this is the, you know, the kind of activity that we, we uh, provide, uh, we, we, we do to the public. To, to get uh, this kind of big support very successfully, I suppose. Well, just I, I think Mike, Mike can, can, can tell you, uh, uh, because he's been to Thailand so many times, I don't remember how many times, but in the past 20 years, you probably have seen a lot of change regarding uh, uh, the picture of astronomy in the country. Yeah, yeah, it's been remarkable. And I have to say that um, <clears throat> I have the pleasure to chair the uh, International Science Advisory uh, Committee yes. of NARIT. And uh, this, is, this comprises independent people from UK, Germany, Japan. Uh, and uh, we came to the conclusion two years ago that NARIT now had the world's best public outreach program in astronomy. 
in other words, number one in the world for its outreach. And I think you can see why. And this comes from almost nothing, uh, well, quite ago. nothing, but 20 years ago, very, very little. And uh, it's the dedication and the energy and the foresight of people like Saren and his staff who've made all this possible. Yes, thank you, Saren, for the, for the answer to the question that my question had started this off. But can I just finally answer that? Not only even more congratulations and further encouragement, um, I am um, by training um, uh, and experience, I'm an educationalist and I have worked around the world and I just am amazed and you're too modest to say this, so I will say it, Saran, that the contribution you and your team and colleagues are making to the educational, educational progress generally in Thailand is immeasurable. So once again, congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mike. Um, I think we have time for one more quick question and then we probably have to finish. Uh, if there is anybody else who'd like to. Aran, uh, I would like to add to what Mike Jeffries just mentioned. I'm just an amazed at what you and your team are doing out there in Narita. I've heard about it from Mike, but when I listen to this, I'm just absolutely awestruck with what you're doing there. Uh, just one question. You said you have two Botswana out there, maybe for more than a year, who are doing in, who are in your research team. What, what are your expectations of them when they come back to Botswana? What, what would they bring with them and what would they establish here in Botswana on their return back? Well, uh, I think they initially they they wanted to come and be trained on on radio astronomy because I understand that Botswana will be part of the SKA for the second phase. Mm. Yes, and so the initial plan was to train them to get used to uh, the work uh, under radio astronomy, including uh, designing and fabricating uh, instruments uh, in the. Uh, for, for in the radio frequency. And uh, right now I, I understand that they like to extend their stay also. They, 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 they would love to enroll uh, as a PhD, as PhD students searching my university and work uh, and do research at NARIT to complete their PhDs. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but because they are now uh, funded uh, by both uh, NARIT and BIUST, uh, we, we have to find uh, arrangements for them, but but we we happy to do so. Why not? Uh, but Thank but you. if they enroll here, they, they probably have to uh, take a degree or, or do a degree in astrophysics. Yes. Thank you, Saran. Well done indeed. Okay, um, I think we probably have to begin to wrap up. But again, I'd really like to thank. Uh, uh, Saran for the excellent talk and um, as I say I'm very much looking forward to being able to go back again to Thailand also Botswana in the not too distant future. Um, it was great to see so many people at this time of the day logging in. I noticed that uh, the Deputy Permanent Secretary from the Ministry in Botswana uh, was uh, present for most of the talk. I think he had another meeting just before uh, the questions started but it was good to see Dr. Bipalady here as well, as well as everybody else. Um, I'll just make a, a small advert that a, a month from now, four weeks from now, on the 25th of March, I think it is, uh, Harold and Gerald.